Hey guys, I'm Jonathan. Welcome to this new video. We will learn how to do this. Just before starting the video, I wanted to tell you that you can download the source file. The link is in the description. If you discover this channel, I currently publish 2-3 to three videos per week related to filmmaking, advertising video, and 3D. With Cinema 4D, Blender and Houdini. So, if you are interested with these subjects, don't hesitate to subscribe. I thank in advance all the people who like, comment and share my videos. You know it helped me a lot. If you want to have help, you can join the Discord server and the Facebook group. The links are in description. We don't waste any more time. If you are ready, let's go. So this shot is a shot from the new ad for Kinder Buono Ice Cream. You can find the entire ad on the YouTube channel Kinder Buono France or by typing Kinder Buono on YouTube. And so we're going to resume from this shot which is the third plan which I find is magnificent. So we will be able to redo this plan entirely on Houdini. So I'm going to show you pretty quickly how we're going to go about creating this kind of stuff on Houdini. So we're going to start from a tube that we're going to transform into a volume here with the ISO offset, and then we're going to place points a little bit randomly on this volume. Then, we will create a simulation of particles from the points that we will have created just before. Therefore the points that we will have created will emit particles. Then we will use this emission of particles to create lines. Then, the simulation we will not need it we will use the timeshift node to freeze the simulation. We will then use the VOP point to be able to create a deformation like here on the reference image. We can see that it is a little rounded at this level and also rounded at the end here of the chocolate simulation so then, as I said, we will freeze the simulation here with the timeshift so basically the particles will be motionless. We will just have fixed lines like this and to be able to do the enlargement simulation. We will add the carve node here we will add keyframes. Then we will add the node sweep to be able to simply add a cylinder around these lines to be able to create geometry. And then we will add spheres at the end of this geometry to be able to have a little bit more rounded here at the level of the end. My lines and then we'll convert it all to volume. Convert it all back to polygon we'll cache that. And then we will have here our output null that we can bring later in another geometry node to be able to render directly on Houdini with Redshift. So I'm going to add a new tube and we'll be able to start creating this little setup right away. So I forgot to mention at the beginning of the video. Uh, obviously, the tube node here, you have to go into object mode. Here you add a geometry node. So here I called it kinder. I call them whatever you want. You can rename it here if you want and double click inside. And there, you can do tab and add your tube inside the geometry node. So here I imported my tube to add a node it's the tab key if you ever don't know. What you're looking for here tube and you take the first one and we'll be able to come and view it with the little blue tab and me I will put here with the apparent lines. So for that you just have to go to the little tab here to have the lines visual so here at the level of my tube. Just increase the number of columns instead of 12. I'm going to put 32 for a little more subdivision at that level and then I'll take my node transform to be able to change the scale. So there I'm going to visualize on the blue tab here in the uniform scale I'm going to put 2 to be able to enlarge it, twice as tall here at the level of in height. I'm going to put 0.75 so then uh, at the level of the tube 2, I forgot to check end caps so I can close this tube, but it's just up and down. So then, once we've done that, we can add the ISO offset node to be able to create a volume from this geometry. So there I click here to view my volume and there we can see that it is quite random. So I will increase here the number of divisions to be able to have a little more resolutions on the level of my volume. So here I'm going to put it at 50. So then I will be able to come and copy my points randomly here on this volume. So I'm going to take the scatter node which will add points. And here, by default, it is a thousand. I'm going to add 50 first. I will see later that it gives in here. At the level of coming uncheck this little box to have points a little more random. So here, I'm also going to put the background of my black viewport. So for that I put my mouse at the viewport. I press D on background and here in color I'm going to put dark me. I prefer to work like that and then I'm going to be able to put the node delete to be able to delete some points so I will be able to visualize the node delete. I'm going to go into this volume. I'm going to activate it and I'm going to put bounding sphere, 
and I'm going to put point here so I can remove some points. So there, I'm going to put my sphere in the center. I'm going to enlarge it to put three on it so I can remove all the dots. A really central here of my volume. And therefore they're at the level of the radius of the sphere. I'm going to leave one here. I'm just going to scale it up in height. So then at my node scatter I'm going to reduce the points a bit. There, I think we have a little too much. So I'm going back here on the end instead of 50 meters 40. And then you can come and change the seat of the scatter to be able to place your points a little differently. So there, the idea is to have points that are fairly spaced from each other. Uh, there for example, we can see that we don't have enough points on this side, but which are all on this side. So I think I'm going to leave it at zero. It was pretty good so I'm going to leave it like that. I will see later. Maybe we can come and replace the seat if ever we need to. So then, after that, I could put a draw. So there, it will be the output of the shape. I will call it before simulation so then. Before putting my simulation with the pop network. And I will create an ID attribute. We will need later to create lines from particle simulations. I put it sign ptnum to simply have the point numbers. Next I will put my pop network so I searched here popnet. So I'm going to be able to visualize the popnet here. With the blue tab, I'm going to be able to go inside here. I will remove what is not needed here. In the source, I will put on all points so that means that all the points will emit particles. And then here, I want to add strength because if I press play, we have nothing because we have absolutely no strength. So here I'm going to add pop wind so I'm going to put it at this level there and here in strength. I'm going to put 2 at the y-axis. And so if I press play we can see that we have a simulation of particles on the y-axis so here. I'm going to leave all the default settings without noise because we want straight lines, not lines that go off a bit in all directions. But we don't want that in our case. So here that's why I'm going to leave it here on zero. And then come and take my pop axis force to be able to add a rotational movement to my particles around an axis. So here I have my pop axis force. I will increase its height to 5. I'm going to set radius to 2. And here, I want to come and see at the level of the speed what it gives. I will press play. And so I'm going to change the height here. I'm going to set it to 10. So then, at the level of the rotation speed here, I'm going to leave suction speed at a high level. I'm going to add a positive value because there. If we put a negative value, it sends the particles outside of our form here. Whereas if we put a positive value, it precisely attracts the particles towards the like this. For us, it's more or less a simulation like that that we therefore want a little less. I think I'll put 0, 5 here and see what happens. Finally, at the level of my pop axis force, I set a rotation speed to 0, 5 and the suction speed to 0 0.25. And we get this simulation. So then, last thing at the level of our source, here of particles. We will go to the panel, attribute and we will deactivate our ID attribute. Otherwise we will have two and it will cause problems for the future. So here, don't forget to disable the attribute. So here I go back to my kinder geo. And I'm going to go directly to add the node I'm going to view it here. I'm going to go to the group panel and there we're not going to do on all point but on by group and we're going to add the attribute ID and it will create rows as expected. So if we look at the simulation from scratch, we can see that we do have a line swirl. So that's exactly what we're looking to do. So then, as I told you earlier, this simulation of particles, we will not necessarily need. It's really to create the lines from the points. So here, now, what we're going to do is we're going to add the node time shift and we're going to be able to freeze the simulation on frame 240. So there by default. Oh, we have dollar sign $f and I will replace by dollar sign $fend. So here we will be able to come and add the resample so there it will add several points with the same distance between each point at the level of each of our line. So here to come activate it, I leave the value at 0 0.1.
a goal to come here to activate the points to see what happens. So there, it's not bad. And here, uh, instead of having straight lines, I'm going to put subdivision curves here to have a little more subdivisions if we ever need to correct our lines a little bit then here. I didn't forget to come activate the curve view attribute. It will serve us to then deform our lines with the point bop so that that will add a value between 0 and 1 on each of our lines and then we will be able to perform operations suddenly. With curves on this value, between 0 and 1 for each of our lines. So here, if we look at our line simulation, we can see that we have lines that are relatively straight. We, we would like to have something a little more rounded here towards the middle so uh, like here on the reference image, to see that it's slightly rounded here. Towards the end, the lines meet towards a point here more or less in the center. So here, we're going to do that with the VOP point. We must already created an attribute to be able to deform our lines according to the normals. Here I'm going to add a node attribute wrangle and I'm going to come here and type a line of code, so it's going to be very simple. I'm going to type v for vector at Ben Dyer equals normalize for the normal. And I don't forget the semicolon at the end to create we can visualize normal with this little visualizer here. We can see that suddenly the normals are well positioned at the L level of our curves according to the points that we had added here with the resample node. So once we've done that, we'll be able to add the VOP point to be able to do our deformation. So here it is ultimately code language. So it seems easier in some cases because it's more visual with rather than typing lines of code, especially if you have big operations. Sometimes it's easier to type code and have 10 lines than to have 50 nodes here in the point. And in the end, not to meet again. Well, it really depends on each case. Here, we, in our case, we won't have a lot of nodes. So here, I'm going to put my position on the normal displace a long node on the position. And the on the position at this level. Then, come and take uh, the bind node to be able to bring the attributes. So we're going to bring our curve view attribute created just before with the resample node. We will put it in a ramp parameter. Here I am going to put this ramp in a node multiply. Here I'm going to add a parameter in, in number 2 to be able to add a multiplier to this deformation. So I will put the parameter. So there it will simply be an integer. So then here I could put the output of this multiply and amount at the level of the normal displace along. We are going to add the attribute we created with the line of code, the Ben Dyer. We called it Ben Dyer so it will be our attribute that will be used for normal. So here I can link Ben Dyer to the normals. At this level here at the default ramp level. It's an RGB ramp. We want a ramp spline to have a value between 0 and 1. So here I can go back to the level of my kinder geo at this level. I can visualize my bot point so then we will be able to unfold this graph at this level. To see a little better, I will add a parameter to 0. 5 for example here I want to increase its value. For the moment, I'm going to put it at roughly. We'll see what happens. So here, by default, we have linear curves. So you have to click on the parameters and what we want is rounded curves. So for that, I'm going to select each of the parameters here. Put B spline here and the same there. And so all you have to do is increase the parameter to have a deformation. Then it doesn't work. Um, I think I made a mistake in the VOP point. So I'll go back inside. You have to put the bend dyer in vector. You have to put a vector float here and so there. Now, if we go back to our geo node and this time increase the value of the parameter. Of the multiplier we can see that we have a deformation. So there, we may be able to increase the value of this parameter here in the middle. So instead of, we're going to put 10 and so there we can see that we have a deformation here like this. So we will be able to obtain the shape here more or less rounded at this level here I am going to set up the multiplier to. Maybe 0.20 that's it. Seems pretty good to me. Maybe even 0.25 to have a bigger deformation. So I'm going to leave it like that for now and we'll see later if there's a need to change. So then I can add the default settings and then I'll be able to create another null to signal that it's the end of my lines here we'll be able to start doing the animation. So here I'm going to put it online.
and I will be able to add the carve node. So, as I was telling you, the carve node will allow us to do the simulation because there we have a lines that are fixed throughout our timeline. So here, we added images on the carve node so I'm going to put it in green to remind me that this node contains key images. For that, I select the node. I press C here. I click on the green tab and we will be able to change the parameter of a carve here. So here, you have to visualize it. And we will be able to change the first parameter. So I'm going to put it at the start of my animation on frame 1. I will set this value to set to 0 0.5. and I'm going to put at the end of my animation. So I'm going to make an animation over 120 frames and I'm going to put here at 0.05. So I forgot to add my image and so there. You have to do left alt to add the image here. And suddenly I'm going to go back to the front page and I'm going to put 0. 0.5 attacks here and I do left alt to add my keyframe. So there, if I'm sure there are a lot of lines that are growing. So that's cool. On the other hand, the animation cord is not great. So here I am going to select our map using the animation editor. I press H to refocus my curve and then I'm going to take the first the first handle here. I'm going downhill like this. And so like that, we will have an accelerated curve at the beginning which will gradually slow down until the end. We can see what it gives and therefore it is already much better. So here, this carve node I'm going to come and duplicate it to be able to create a group with the points here. The blue points you see so that you can then add spheres at the end of each of its lines. So here, I'm going to right-click to do action and I'm going to make a copy. So here we will have our carve node, which is copied. I'll try to make extra. We don't need it. Here I will add another group. I mean visualize it here see node I will call it sphere. And here I will put a star in the group. And I will be able to put the node merge here to be able to merge these two groups. So here I've selected my carve node. I'm selecting the second group here and I'm going to take them here in the merge node. And there, we can visualize our scene. So there currently, our simulation is only lines, so we have no geometry. So there we can see directly. Added the sweep node to be able to add cylinders around these lines and create geometry. So there you have the lines that will serve as a reference and there you have to add an object. So we are going to add a circle to be able to create cylinders. Here, I press tab and come and get my circle like this. And I'm going to come and place it in the sweep and we can see that it's way too much. So there I'm going to go to the level of the sweep and to the level of the scale. I'm going to reduce it. Roughly at 0.05 for now. So there, we can also see that we have a problem with our geometry. So it's because you have to add a normal node before the sweep and so there. Everything is back in order with the normal node. So here, at the level of the sweep, we will also activate end caps. We will put single polygon. And there, we will be able to deactivate. The rotation will not be needed and we will also disable stretch around turn. We also won't need. And we will be able to directly add the spheres at the end of his tubes, as you said with the group that we had created just before. So there, I will create another copy to point. I'm going to come and place these on the right. And in the left part of what I'm going to have to come and add a sphera which will serve us as objects. So here I'm going to add my sphera. I'm going to link it here in the left. And there, if I have just clicked on to be able to have several spheres. So here, at the level of this sphere, I will put it in polygon. I'm going to set the frequency to 5. That will be more than enough and at the level of the scale, I'm going to put 0.01. For now, We'll see what happens I'm going to put the node merge and we'll be able to merge suddenly with the node sweep with which are at this level. We have our two, our two geometries which are merged. So there, what I want to do now is to create the deformation at the level of my lines because there you can see that they have the same diameter. Throughout the simulation of which we do not know what we want. If we look at the reference image, we can see that they are quite thin at this level. There, they are extremely fine and there we can see that we have a ball suddenly at the end. So to do that, we're going to use the node sweep because it already has this feature by default. Otherwise we could do it with the point vop. But suddenly, since it already has the functionality to be able to do that, we will take advantage of it. So if I go on the sweep, I will explain here on apply scale along curve and suddenly, this curve will determine the shape. 
I'll have our cylinders here at this level so here I'm going to go to the parameters and I'm going to put a rounded curve like this. So there you can already have the shape of our cylinders. So at the beginning they are big and at the end they are extremely thin. There they are close to zero. So that's not what we want. We already want to invert these two values so I'm going to put it here like this. So the end I think I'm going to set the value to about zero. Two more or less here at the end that's where I need to have a big thickness at the level of my cylinders huh. So here I'm going to put the maximum value on the graph and I'm going to add a second point here as something like this and I'm going to add a third point so I can add some magnification. So there, I put all the parameters of my curve in B-spline. It will be a little better. So this value will come down a little bit more. I want to bring it closer to add a little more contrast. And so there, we can see that we have a form that is already not too bad. So there, you have just drawn the shape of your cylinder here with your curve. So if you put your cylinders too, it will simply correspond to the shape of this curve there. So there, the point that is here is the start of our cylinders, which is quite big. Then, a cylinders decreases in diameter until arriving at the thinnest point which corresponds to this one. And then we suddenly have the big thickness at the end with the point here which corresponds to the end of our curve. So here you can increase the value if you want. You can put a dot too for example to increase the diameter a little bit more. Here, at this point, it is as you wish. I'm going to leave I think the shape is not too bad, so I'm going to leave it like that. We can add a little bit more contrast here. Well, I think I'll leave it like that for now. And suddenly, at the level of the spheres, change the radius to match the end here of my curve, so I will put 0.095. So here it is at the level of the diameter of my sphere. I put 0.095 and it seems pretty good here. So that's about the diameter here of the end of our cylinders. So that's cool. So here, once the shape of your if one of you, oh uh, we come here at the level of. You can come and work on the curve a little bit if you ever want. You can also play with the different values and the interpolations here. You can play around with those settings a bit to get a shape that works for you here. At level six does so, once you have the right form. As a result, the right size at the level of the sphere which more or less corresponds to the final diameter. Here, cylinders. We have to convert everything into volumes with the VDB from polygons nodes so here we have some for the moment we will convert them into volumes so here we can see that the resolution is not high enough at all. So here you have to change the voxel size the further you go down. The more resolution you will have but the longer it will take to calculate for your computer so you have to try to find the right or the right value between quality and a calculation speed so here I think I'm going to put 0 1 I'm going to go down a little more to around 0 0.075. Here I'm going to leave it like that. Then I'm going to put the VDB reshape SDF node and I'm going to put it on I'm going to put it on dilate. And the subdivisions at 6. Here we can see what it looks like. So it's a little bit time to calculate. So there you can see it's not bad. But it came to remove a little bit of material. We will simply duplicate the node to have a better shape. At the level of the cylinders right here if we could also also play with the values. So there instead of 1 1 to emit 2 for example. So I tried with 2 it may be a little too much so I'm going to leave on 1 so I have here a first dilate on 1. A second on 1 also. After that, just play around with the settings a bit to try to get the best result. So here we have our eye can then come and convert it so convert VDB. And this time we will convert our volume. Because there, currently, it's volumes. We are going to convert them into geometry. And so there, we have back geometry meshes. If we zoom in we can see that we have polygons here so then, once we've converted our volumes into, we'll be able to put all that into so here. I'm going to take a node file cache. Here at mode level I will put explicit. I will create a cache folder then put slash to create a folder dollar sign OS that corresponds to the name of the node. Here, I will create another folder dollar sign HIPNAME, the name of the file. And here I will come to replace caramel simulation. So here by default, it will cache on our timeline so 240 images. I'm going to put on 120 frames.
Once that's done, I'm going to save to disk and I'm going to wait for the caching to finish normally. T it shouldn't take too long. So it took about 10 minutes to do the caching. So there, I think it's still a little too big before the end. If by then so I'm going to put our peak and I'm going to reduce that a little bit so pick has just visualized and I'm going to highlight here minus 0.025 reduced a little bit and I'm going to be able to put a little smooth to be able to smooth the everything. So there you go, we're done for our simulation. Now, I will be able to put another draw and this draw will serve as my exit. So this will be the end of the simulation and we will be able in a new geometry node, so found directly to do the and to render our animation. So once we have finished our simulation here, we will use the null to import it into another geometry node. So I'm going to go back to object mode at this level. I'm going to bring in some new geometry. So the first I'm going to be able to mask it and so I'm disabling the blue square here and there I'm going to call that one kinder. So that one will be my render host. So I'm going to press these and I'm going to put it blue. Me, I still have my rendering notes in blue and I'll be able to go inside. I'm going to go to the node and take object merge and look for the null that we created in the object. So here at a simulation. So this is our final. And so there, we have many other simulations. Who was imported at this level? So now we can directly create the materials. So here I'm going to go into object mode and I'm going to go into network material mode and I'm going here. Added the RS material builder which is right there. So there I'm going to rename caramel and I'm going to go inside double click. And there you have the material standard so we're just going to use that to create our caramel material. We're not going to use any textures or anything here. In terms of materials, you can see my color here. So I'll let you copy the settings if you ever copy them. The same then I set the roughness to 0.1. There, I left default and then I came to add subsurface at this level. So there is the super important setting for the caramel. So at the up power level, I put a here. I wanted to copy the parameters at the color level if you ever want to copy the same thing. So there it is. It's really a material that is very, very simple. I'm going back here in the object panel, right there. I'm going to go into Kinder Render. I'm going to be able to add the material I just created. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go into the matte object and just add the caramel material. So then I will also be able to add my camera. So here I am going to click on camera at this level to come to the tour vertically. I will reset all parameters to zero first. At the camera view level I'm going to set the focal length to something like 85 millimeters. So here at the camera level, I will let you copy the parameters if you ever copy them. The same position of cameras. So I tried to simply copy from the original video so here. I put 0 0.6.5, 13 0, negative 3 and 75. So here it is. If you want to copy the camera positions, there is no problem. So the material is attributed here to this object. So the object with the caramel simulation so now all that remains is to make the lights. So I can also uncheck the little padlock to avoid moving my camera when I moved my mouse. So here, for the lights, I will add a dome light and I will put the HDRI image in the source file which will be available in descriptions and I will add an image in order to bring out the subsurface of my caramel material. And so once you've done all that, all your lights, materials, just go here in the network out. And then you have your redshift settings here which are right there. So here in output you have your output settings with the destination folder. You have the recording files. So I'm going to render here in bad manager. You can render your different passes here in redshift. Go ahead you have all the settings with the samples. I disabled it. The automatic sampling for the final rendering. And then you have all your global illumination settings there if you want to turn it on but it will take longer to render. Caustics, we don't need. And then if you have an RTX card, which you have the option to optimize here in the system setting. But I don't have one, so I don't have the option here that appears. So here is. Then if you want to render to Fox Render Farm, you have my link in the description which allows you to have $45 offered to be able to test this farm to see if it suits you. So there you go. I hope you enjoy this video.
Tell me if you like Houdini. And if you like this kind of video quite complete is still quite long. Anyway, I really hope this helps. If so, do not hesitate to leave a comment to like to share this video. So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, subscribe and share to support my work. I see you next time. Bye.